Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on S3. It is Tuesday morning and we're well into the swing of things and we take your money matters seriously and understanding the value of money. That is important. And we're going to meet up in Johannesburg with Kuchle as she's about to chat to financial expert Babalwa. Zoe, good morning to everyone in studio. Moloni Nonge Emzante. I hope that today you woke up feeling good and inspired. I am excited for our conversation this morning, live from Johannesburg with personal financial ex expert and podcaster, Babala Nonge Emzante. It's something that we can all relate to, right? Imali, money, health, especially during these times where the cost of living is skyrocketing through the roof. Babalo, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. I mean, first things first, let's get into your podcast, Epoko Tweni. Talk to us about that and what inspired you to want to get the conversation going, especially in your mother tongue. Look, we all have pockets, first of all. <laughs> yes. We may not want everybody to know exactly what's in our pocket, but what inspired it is, first of all, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, if you realize at the, at, the, at the height of it, so many people were dying. And I just started saying to myself, look, you had a career in financial services. Why not make it into an accessible medium where perhaps some of the families of the people who've departed their children mm -hmm. can understand how finances work? Because it's not in all households, for example, where everybody knows where the files are, mm -hmm. how this family is going to make it once the breadwinner has passed away. Mm -hmm. So it was really that. And secondly, doing it in a course, which is my mother tongue, um, we live in a continent where English is not the most spoken language in every home. Mm -hmm. um, in South Africa alone, I think it's the Zulu is the most spoken language in South African homes, and then Isqosa is. And so language becomes a form of exclusion. Mm -hmm. And so Epoko Twain's objective really is to promote financial inclusion by giving speakers of African languages, and I hope to expand into more languages, just the dignity of having information about Imali, which is mm. one of the most important subjects in life, mm. accessible in the languages spoken by most of the population. Including everyone in the conversation, because also just trying to understand finances can be intimidating for a lot of people. Now, there's a cycle where Umana Imali Bogotwin, and then you no longer have Imali, what is the one thing you would encourage people to understand about the flow of money? Habits, actually, mm. is what determines who creates wealth mm. and who ends up poor. What I mean by that is if you do something, if you've got a certain set of habits, something that you did when you used to get 100 rands pocket money, mm. you will have a salary of 100,000 rands a month one day. But if your habits are spending uh, more than you do save, so that is what really is going to determine. So there are people who don't earn much, mm. but they create wealth because they've created the right kind of habits. Mm. So if I would encourage everybody this morning, I know it's tough, I know there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of prices of things going up every day, mm. but just stay with the correct habits. Mm. Kill the bad habits and stay with the correct habits. Even if you do try, what are some of the external factors that can affect the value of money? So there's something called inflation mm -hmm. that economists uh, use to describe, for example, I'll make an example for you. In 1972, a wimpy burger cost um, 25 cents. Today, a wimpy burger, perhaps without even chips or a salad, mm -hmm. will cost you something like 75 rands. Mm -hmm. Now, if me and you live until 2060, that same burger is going to cost 16,000 rands. What? We can't even imagine it, right? No. So in other words, we need to live our lives and not just get by from day to day, but make sure that our money, however we earn it, with salaries, with investment, that it keeps up with inflation so that if we live long enough to get to 2060, mm. we're able to afford the same burger that today we're paying 75 rands for. That just put things into perspective for me, and I am actually so blown away. But then how can we keep up with that as a bando? You know, even if you're not making much, but you know that in 2060, you can afford Lebeg. So two things, you've got two gears. Mm. The first gear is spending. Mm. Um, if, if you don't need to spend on luxuries, try and minimize spending on luxuries. Yes, have that treat once in a while, mm -hmm. but don't make it a daily occurrence to spend on luxuries. Secondly, how much you earn. Yes, salaries are not keeping up with inflation. However, you can invest. Mm. Take that part of your money off your salary that you don't spend and put it into assets. Buy shares of companies, buy unit trusts, because then it's growing at a rate higher than your salary. 
Ah, Babalwa, thank you so, so much for joining us this morning. We are only getting the conversation started and you are not going anywhere. We're going to get deeper into the conversation shortly. Make sure to keep in touch with us on social media using the hashtag Expresso Show. There's more live from Johannesburg. It's my feel good breakfast show. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show, indeed, Expresso on S3. Welcome back, and you're just in time as we're about to head back to Johannesburg with Kukle, where we are continuing our conversation around our finances with personal financial expert and podcaster, Babalwe. And of course, she's also got some incredible knowledge to share with you. Yes, indeed, Zoe. We are coming to you live from Johannesburg this morning with personal financial expert and podcaster, Babala Nongenge. She's here to give us insight on how we can better manage our finances, navigate our way through these changing economic times, and just get our money right. And we're going to get more into that conversation right now. Babala, your podcast is Epoko Twenty. Um, you teach people on how to better manage their finances. How do you break down those principles in a way that Umdu can listen and understand and apply the things that you are teaching? So one of the things which I'm sure you know about people in this country, um, particularly rural people, mm. they are people who know a lot about agriculture. So people who plant, they know that you don't eat everything that you harvest. Mm. You save some for seed. And you use, for example, mealies, you use it in, in, in animal feed, you use it to eat. You, you save some for the next planting season. So that's, that's the topic we've discussed extensively in Epoko 20 to say, let's remember our grandmothers and our grandfathers. They were not as consumerist as what we are now. Mm. Um, the second group of people actually in urban and peri-urban areas, or what some like to call townships, you know, is this whole concept of collective saving. Mm. Imikalelo, Stockfell, whatever it's called in your area, do you know that even if you are a professional middle class people, that's a great, great way to hold yourself accountable, to save with like-minded people. Mm. Again, that's an episode that we've addressed on Epoko 20 that you can listen when you've got time. Mm. So those are some small, seemingly insignificant things, but are helping people every day. And I love the fact that you are referencing, you know, about doing the rural areas because I think about my grandmothers, my grandfathers, even at home, Umama and her friends, we yes. fell. So budgeting is not a new thing and it's not necessarily concentrated on one group. It's good for everyone, right? Completely. And, and the principle there is that we do not eat everything that we earn. Mm. So the salary that you receive, don't condition your mind to consume everything right now. Mm. If you train yourself, for example, to live on 50%, mm. your costs, your needs, petrol, all of those things you can't do without. Mm. Train yourself for that to not exceed 50% of what you earn. Mm. The next 30%, that is for, um, for saving for the future. And you can say off that 30%, 10% you put towards retirement, 10% you put towards that goals trip, mm. and another 10% you put towards December. And then 20% that you can use for the treats, the luxuries. Mm. In other words, if you listen to that split, 50, 30, 20, it's not that the 50 is where the luxuries are mm. going to go. You use the most minimal amount for the luxuries. That's how we've observed a lot of people building wealth over the long term. I absolutely love that you didn't exclude entertainment and the no. things that you enjoy and you love. It's just a matter of doing it responsibly and consciously. Now, a lot of people may, you know, wonder, what is the mental shift that needs to go into understanding finances and managing your personal finances in a manner that is responsible and sustainable as well? Because it's easy to listen to all the principles, applying it may be the challenge. So, um, accountability... That is a very, very important principle. That is something that you, you need to, if, if you need to be accountable to someone about your finances. Um, and secondly, use some of the electronic money. We all understand David also. Set up a David order for that investment, that you, for that savings account, mm. for that goals trip. You know, because at least you know it's gone off automatically. It doesn't depend on you remembering it mm. at all. Um, and thirdly, you know, don't be overly emotional where money is concerned. You know, these days we are inundated with the latest new products. Mm -hmm. um, they come up on your social media feed. Just silence the noise mm. and focus on your goals. 
Stay away from online shopping, everyone. Take a second to think about that decision. Now, before we let you go, Babal, I have to ask, do you have any words of advice or encouragement to people who want to manage their finances more responsibly? Look, I'll first of all admit that things are tough, mm -hmm. but it's not the first time in the history of humanity that we have had rough cycles. Mm. So our ancestors have survived these things before. And with the right headspace, with the right education, educate yourself. You know, a podcast is something you can listen to when you mm. can't sleep at night. Look up Epoch 20. Find the topic that you is relevant to you. There's also English content on there for people who don't understand English. Mm. And empower yourself and you will make it. Oh, thank you so, so much for joining us this morning and just encouraging us and empowering us and making financial conversations more accessible and understandable for Umdu may be intimidated by it. Thanks. Thanks, Kushi. Now, thank you for joining us live from Johannesburg. It has been a pleasure having a conversation with personal financial expert and podcaster, Babala Nongenge. So I hope that you have taken down notes and that you at least try to approach your finances a little bit more responsibly and consciously moving forward. From myself, Akusha Adams, it's been a pleasure waking up with you live from Johannesburg this morning.